I let loose has gained a lot of new players recently, with the release of Update 12 as well as from the free weekend promotion, allowing gamers new and experienced alike to participate in this unique genre. With this being said, a lot of the information inside of the game can be a little overwhelming to new eyes, and it's difficult to keep track. One of the most important aspects inside of the game are the infantry, recon, and armor roles. Each role has their own unique placement inside of the game, and I wanted to make this video briefly describing what they are, as well as their designation and purpose inside of Hell at Loose. So with that being said, my name is Sense, and thank you for joining me in my guide that covers all the roles inside of Hell at Loose. Before I begin, I just would like to say that I do have in-depth guides for quite a bit of the roles inside the game, and I'm making more. So if I mention a role that piques your interest, and you would like to know more about it in detail, I would encourage checking the description of this video for a more in-depth guide. But starting off, I want to provide some context by quickly describing the three kinds of roles in-game, as well as what they do. As I mentioned previously, the three role categories are Infantry, Armor, and Recon. Beginning with Infantry, Infantry makes up a bulk of the team and the players have a series of roles to choose from, ranging from general purpose to more specialized. The overall purpose of the infantry includes defending or attacking objectives and strongpoints, establishing resources for use by the commander, as well as being the general boots on the ground for the game to progress. The infantry roles include Riflemen, Assault, Automatic Riflemen, Medic, Support, Engineer, Machine Gunner, Anti-Tank, and Squad Leader. Starting with the Riflemen, the Rifleman is designed for general combat and fighting the enemy. This class doesn't have any specialization inside the game and is recommended by the developers for new players who don't want to worry about getting into role mechanics and just want a good combat experience. The Rifleman starts out with a general infantry rifle for each faction, but can unlock other classes with better weapons. Other than fighting, the Rifleman carries an ammo box, which when dropped, allows other teammates to replenish their ammunition. This is especially helpful for other roles who use a lot of ammo, such as the Automatic Rifleman and the Machine Gunner. The second infantry role, Assault, is designed for close quarters combat in mind. Either equipped with a submachine gun, shotgun, or semi-automatic rifle, this class has a huge amount of firepower to get up close and personal with the enemy. The Assault role is perfect for advancing on points or trying to take enemy fortifications. This class is also equipped with smoke grenades, which are perfect for covering movement or shielding advances from enemy fire. Next, the automatic rifleman role is equipped with a fully automatic rifle or submachine gun. This class is great at providing an advancing team with short or long range suppressive fire, keeping enemies heads down and allowing your team to push farther up. The automatic rifleman is a unique hybrid between the rifleman and the machine gunner roles, providing a high amount of suppression while still being mobile enough to push up with the rest of the squad. Moving on, the medic is the only role capable of bringing incapacitated enemies back into the fight. Teammates that can be revived are marked on the map with a red syringe icon. The medic is equipped with morphine, which can revive down players, as well as has a ton of reserve bandages that allow the medic to heal players that are wounded and stop them from bleeding out. Next, the support role is arguably one of the most useful roles in the entire game. The support role is equipped with a box of supplies that, when dropped, allow certain deployable items to be built. These include fortifications, garrison respawn points, as well as anti-tank guns. Other than supplies, the second class for the support role has ammo, as well as explosive ammo, boxes, allowing teammates to replenish not only ammo for their primary and secondary weapons, but also grenades, rockets, and mines. Next is the Engineer role. The Engineer is the only role that can place down defensive fortifications, such as barbed wire, tank guards, bunkers, and walls. While all of these structures require supplies to be built, with enough supplies and time, the Engineer can turn a single objective into an absolute fortress with their fortifications. The most important billable for the Engineer is resource nodes, which, when built, provides resources to the commander every minute. The engineer role can also be equipped with anti-personnel and anti-tank mines, as well as satchel charges. Moving on to the machine gunner role, this role doesn't compromise on firepower and is mainly focused on holding down objectives and raining copious amounts of lead onto enemies. The machine gunner role is equipped with a heavy machine gun and a pistol. 
The machine guns are capable of massive destruction with their large ammo capacity and sustainable fire. However, this high firepower comes at the price of mobility. The machine guns cannot be accurately fired unless they are on a bipod. Next is anti-tank. As the name suggests, the anti-tank role has high explosive weapons that are capable of countering enemy armor. The weapon used depends on which class is selected, but the anti-tank role has a number of options to take out vehicles, such as rocket launchers, anti-tank guns, or a more portable satchel charge. While tank hunting is really fun, keep in mind that keeping in communication with your squad is key and having teammates assist you is easier than taking out an entire tank by yourself. Finally, the officer is the role that is designed to keep the rest of the squad in line. The squad depends on the officer for deploying outpost spawn points, communicating and coordinating with the squad as well as other squad leaders, as well as providing insight and orders for the squad to follow. Having an officer with good communication and knowledge can be the difference between a horrible game and a great one. I would highly recommend getting familiar with the other infantry roles first before attempting to play officer. So infantry is the largest role category in the game, but let's move on from being on the ground and talk about rolling in a tank. The armor category is the only category in the game that can control heavy vehicles. By heavy vehicles, I'm referring to tanks, not trucks or half tracks. Each armor squad consists of three people, two crewmen and a tank commander. The crewman role is really designed for operation and maintenance of a tank, as well as to take orders from the tank commander. Crewmen are the only role besides the tank commander that can operate a tank, whether it be driving the tank or taking control of the cannons. For emergency situations when the tank needs to be abandoned, the crewman is equipped with a pistol and a few magazines. After being crewman level 3, a class with a blowtorch is unlocked, allowing the crewman to repair the tank without needing to find an engineer or a repair station. The other role in the armor category is the tank commander. This role is designed to lead the tank squad, as well as keeping in communication with the commander and other squad leads to effectively plan a course of attack. Tank commander is best used by sitting in the spotter seat of the tank, allowing for 360 degrees of movement. This will allow the tank commander to effectively see enemy tanks and infantry, allowing this information to be passed to crewmen or the radio. The final crewman that I'm going to discuss is Recon. Recon has an advantage in terms of being able to operate deep within enemy territory. The duties from the Recon category can include locating and destroying enemy spawns such as garrison and OPs, walking the border between points and destroying enemy supplies or resource nodes, as well as observing and relaying information about enemy armor or movement, which can be taken out by friendly artillery or other teammates. Each Recon squad consists of two people, one sniper and one spotter. Starting with the spotter, this role works similar to the squad leader role. However, it can only be used in recon squad. The spotter can either be equipped with an SMG, carbine, or rifle, and is good at handling enemies close to mid-range combat. The spotter is also equipped with a pair of binoculars, which allow the spotter to work right alongside the sniper, spotting enemies for the sniper as well as for other team members. The spotter is also equipped with a radio, allowing communication between the other squad leaders, commander, and tank commanders. Snipers can work closely with their spotter for identifying enemy targets, taking out artillery, as well as disrupting enemy positions and sneakily eliminating groups of enemies from long distances. So now that we've described the roles and what they do instead of Hell Let Loose, let's finally discuss the role that holds them all together, the commander. The commander, like the name suggests, is responsible for commanding the field of battle. Good commanders are great at teamwork and communication skills, effectively making strategies for the game and managing team resources. Commanders have an arsenal of abilities to utilize inside of the game. Everything from spawning supply drops, vehicles, airhead spawns, bombing and strafing runs, etc. All of these abilities require a certain amount of resources and have a cooldown period. And that's all I have for you guys. Like I mentioned, I just wanted to give a brief description of each of the roles, and I didn't want to go into detail about the weapons, equipment, etc. If you did enjoy this video, I kindly ask that you leave a like. Likes help with YouTube's analytics and gets this video out to more people who are interested. If you are interested in learning more about a role that I've discussed, please feel free to look at the description for my role guides. I have quite a few and I'm planning to make more. 
Also, please feel free to subscribe so you do get a notification whenever I release a new guide. Thank you again for watching, and I hope you enjoy your time inside of Pellet Loose.